The Nothing Phone 2 represents something we haven't seen before in an Android phone. Innovation. Or at least that's what innovation said to Casey Neistat on the launch of the Nothing Phone 2. But is that actually true? Is the Phone 2 really that much better? Is it innovation? Is it different enough to make me want to keep it? Starting with the whole look, feel and design of the Phone 2, and I have to give it to them. Personal opinion, I do love the design. The whole like back of this phone looks stunning. The coils, the transparent design, the LEDs, and the really subtle curve on the back glass does make it way more comfortable to hold in the hands. And then you've got the button placement, the power button on the right hand side, the volume on the left, and even the placement of the fingerprint sensor at the bottom is pretty close to the design of an iPhone with the touch ID button at the bottom of the phone. And just from the hardware perspective on its own, I'd say that it feels like they've got the closest design here to tempt someone away from an iPhone. Now, if you just hold it side by side with an iPhone 14 Pro Max, they are practically identical. It feels like an iPhone in the hand. Innovation. It's kind of like one of those air up water bottles that helps you drink water whilst tricking your brain into thinking you're drinking coke or something else. But that depends on where you are in the level of flagships that you are used to buying. Now, if you're used to buying the S23 Ultra or the iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, then this is a downgrade. But if you are used to non-pros, then this could be a good option. Now, there is one area in the design that I'm not a fan of though, and that is the haptics. Like going from an iPhone or a Pixel or really any other flagship level phone that I've used, they just feel lacking. Other phones I've used really make it feel like you're hitting an actual button when tapping on each key, but the Phone 2 just feels like, well, something else inside is buzzing. The Nothing Phone 2 just feels underwhelming and where others in a way feel quite full and bassy with theirs, the Phone 2 feels very top end and tinny with the haptic vibrations. Now the biggest design innovation with the Nothing Phone 2 is of course the Glyph interface. Now Phone 1 had 12 addressable LEDs on the back, but Phone 2 has taken that up to 33, which opens up some interesting use cases. You still got the charger wiggle to see how charged your phone is, but now there are things like a countdown timer to visually see the countdown. You've got visual volume levels. It can react to the Google Assistant. What's the weather like? It's 21 and partly cloudy. And apps like Uber support the ability to see how close your ride is. Uh, fun fact, almost all the people showing you how this Uber thing works, yeah, they didn't actually order an Uber. They just started a countdown timer. Otherwise, they'd have to actually order an Uber. Otherwise, it's very similar to last year's model. You can flash the lights in various patterns for phone calls or notifications. You can also set a specific sequence for calls or messages from certain people. Now, is this innovation though? Like visually, I think it is. But is it any difference to Samsung's incredible zoom features, iOS 70's recent software updates, ultra fast wireless charging, or even the latest generation flip or foldables? Let me know in the comments down below. And whilst you are down there, I would love if you consider subscribing to see more videos like this, if that's something you're into. We've just hit 100,000 subscribers on this channel, which is absolutely nuts. And I celebrated by eating a hamburger by myself. I don't really advertise this much, but I also have a Discord group linked down below if anyone wants to hang out and chat about tech. And I also share a little bit of the behind the scenes of what's going on to run this channel. But back to the glyphs. What do you think? Is this an innovation or is it just a gimmick? Now, I recently ran a poll and it seems that 80% of people just slap on a case and a screen protector to their phone. And with Nothing Phone being a fairly niche device, case options are relatively thin on the ground. And there's also one other thing that I've never been a fan of, which is turning my phone face down on the table and then risk scratching the glass on the screen, which the phone too, of course, only just encourages you to do more of. And then we've got the cameras. And this is always a very subjective thing from phone to phone. But given that taking photos is something that pretty much everybody does with their phone, I would hope for a second generation phone to perform well, when compared to flagships at least. But the Phone 2's cameras are objectively bad. For £70 more, for example, you can get a Pixel 7 Pro. And when you compare them side by side, there is just no comparison. Like photos on the Pixel are far better exposed, particularly when you shoot in challenging environments with harsh light, and even more so when using the front facing cameras on these phones. Now videos also far better on the Pixel. Um, particularly when shooting into like sunny backgrounds like this, the Nothing Phone really struggles to um, kind of expose the background. It just blows it out and it's all white and you can't see anything. Whereas I think you'll be able to see it on, even on a cloudy day like today with the Pixel 7 Pro, you'll be able to see that um, you can still make out what's in the background and the clouds and you know, all those kind of things. So just to show you a bit what the uh, video and the audio quality is like on the Nothing Phone 2, I'm gonna tell you a quick story of 
when I went to IKEA and I was super, super in a rush, I just wanted to get in and get something. And I got an email on my phone to say that my Apple password had been changed. I was like, well, I haven't changed my Apple password. So straight away, scanned the email, checked out, all looked okay. So I went onto the Apple's website, or I, I actually, I followed the link in the email, important part, followed the link in the email and clicked the links, changed my password. I was like, cool, okay, carried on with my shopping. And then I was like, oh, damn, let me just have a look at that email again. And then I had a look at the email and realized that even though it said like iCloud.com in the address bar at the top, it was like iCloud.com dot something dot something dot something dot com. And so it wasn't actually Apple. And I actually got caught out, which is quite embarrassing given that I used to run an IT company. And actually I ran an IT company at the time of me having that email, clicking on the link and giving away my password. Ugh. Normally I would say that iPhone users don't really need to worry about security and actually there's more reason to run today's sponsor Bitdefender Total Security on an Android phone since iPhone's app store is you know, way more secure. But you just heard me say that I got tricked when getting an email just at the right time which caught me off guard when I was right in the middle of doing something really really busy. But I think for me I'd be making sure that anybody around me that's not that tech savvy is using something like Total Security to block all the stuff that just gets through on the day to day. And we all know who that one friend is that's, you know, a total liability, right? Or an elderly relative or parent or grandparent, you know, just people you want to protect from being taken advantage of. So there is a link down below where you can get a discount on Bitdefender Total Security. It covers up to five devices, so you can run it on everything. And it pretty much runs on everything, Mac, Windows, Android, iOS. Now, I know we are nowhere near Christmas right now, but even buying this, and giving it as a gift to your you know, elderly friend, family, relative, and not only installing this and setting it up and getting it working for them on their devices, but actually using it as an opportunity to ask them and look at their like utility bills, their phone bills, their internet bills, make sure they're not being screwed over on prices because there are so many people that are right now. So use this as an opportunity to go and help somebody out. So thank you Bitdefender for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to grab the link to your discount down below. And thank you for reminding me to remind you to go and look after all the oldies around us. Cheers. And you don't get those features like, you know, five times telephoto or any of Google's software features either. But realistically speaking for the average person, the cameras on the phone too, are okay. Like they'll of course capture memories and moments good enough for most people. So it will of course come down to what you're looking for in a phone. But if having the best camera for roughly the same price, then something like a Pixel 7 or even 7 Pro would be a better choice. Now, as far as the battery goes, you get a 4,700 milliamp hour battery in the phone too. And to be fair, it does a damn good job with getting over six hours of screen on time in general day-to-day -day usage. Now you also get features such as wireless battery share, which lets you charge other devices if you and your friends are in a pinch. And that's helped even more with up to 45 watts wired charging speeds, so you can get fully charged in less than an hour. And so all of that is really good considering that it's using last year's Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, which does come as a bit of a letdown. Now, don't, don't get me wrong here. Like if this phone came out last year, all the reviewers would have been saying that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip is incredible. And to be fair, it is. Like performance is snappy. The phone doesn't feel slow, but for a 2023 device that's trying to rival the flagships who are all running the next generation, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, well, you just have a phone that's already a year behind. But if you don't care about an apples to apples comparison on specs, then you won't be disappointed with the performance of this phone. And the fact that it can get through a full day on a single charge also shows they have put a ton of work into optimizing that Gen 1 chip. The only area I would say it falls down on for me in terms of performance is the fingerprint sensor. Now I've had to set up my fingerprint a couple of times now on this phone because at times it just doesn't work. It tells me that my finger's dirty. And I tried fixing that by adding the same finger a couple of times, but that doesn't work as it tells you that you've already added the same finger, which can be really, really frustrating because when it works, it works really, really well. It's really fast. You also do get face unlock, which can be a way around this. And that works well, but it is certainly a compromise with using an optical sensor, which shines a bright light onto your finger over an alternative, you know, more reliable option. That aside, the screen is really, really nice. Like 120 Hertz, which ramps down to one Hertz, which given the battery performance does do its job really well. It's also bright enough to see in the sunshine, though not as bright as other flagships. And given that it has practically the same size front screen as an iPhone 14 Pro Max, but only has a pinhole camera on the front, it gives you way more screen to enjoy with no silly dynamic edge island thing at the top taking up a ton of space. Also, shout out to Max on Twitter, who pointed out the Phone 2 
doesn't currently support HDR for Netflix. So if you watch a ton of Netflix on your phone, then you might want to take that into account. But as he also pointed out, given Phone 2 has a good peak brightness and support for HDR 10+, plus, perhaps that is something that could come later. With the Phone 2, you get nothing to take on Android with their Nothing OS, and it works well. I'm glad to see that over time they are improving. There is definitely less bugs this time around. But for me, Nothing OS feels quite limited, which for an Android phone isn't normal. When you start the phone, you get the option to choose between Nothing's black and white interface, which just skins everything, including the icons to the black and white versions. But you can also use the color versions if you wish. And I only lasted around an hour on the black and white interface. It looks really cool, but I couldn't for the life of me get on with having everything look the same. I guess as you get used to having apps in you know, certain places, then your muscle memory would get good at just knowing where to go, but it just didn't work well for me. And then there's outside of this, changing the wallpaper and the icons. That's kind of it. But of course, with it being Android, you can install something else like Nova Launcher to gain back that customizability on you know, practically everything, like icons, size, shape, number of icons on screen. I was just expecting a little bit more from a second generation launcher. Now for the audio, the speakers on the Phone 2 are pretty good. Now they definitely sound more tinny with less low ends than something like the 14 Pro Max, which weirdly makes the Phone 2 sound like it's louder. But when I put them next to a decibel meter, it read the same volume. So I think that's just like this placebo effect that's happening there. But factoring in that this phone is 579 pounds here in the UK, and you do have a very similar feel to an iPhone, you know, the overall design, the large 14 Pro Max screen, good speakers, a good battery life. It does make for an overall good phone. Is it a flagship though? I don't think it is, but at half the price of an iPhone, perhaps it's good value. But then compared to other similarly priced Android phones like the Pixel 7 or 7 Pro, it's just going to come down to personal preference. The other question is, is it innovation? Beyond the Glyph interface, I'm not sure of that either. Now, I think Nothing's innovation revolves far more around Carl and Nothing's public interaction than in the product itself currently, which is something that all brands could learn from. But when asked about his thoughts on foldable phones, Carl spoke as if it's something that nobody wants. But honestly, my experience of foldables like the Pixel and Galaxy Folds have totally changed my opinion on what a foldable phone can be capable of and can be innovating with. And you can go and watch my review of both of those right here.